welcome to the NBA show, episode number 330. I'm your host, Norman Santos. Joining me today is Starstream. What? Will you be on episode 330? Is there anything special? Uh, nothing really, just normal news and whatnot. Ooh. <laughs> so, this yeah. looks like maybe a decent speed one. Yeah, yeah. Probably knowing us, we'll probably take 40 minutes. <laughs> Funny, you know. Yeah, uh, probably not. Maybe. You know, we'll it's see. always like that. It's always like that because uh, we always say it's going to be a fast one. Usually when we both on, we kind of spend about uh, the second half of the recording talking about our stuff. <laughs> 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 well, those are always fun. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, we we talk about then again. It's always either the same thing or maybe something different. But oh yeah, it's always different. That is always the games that we play. Oh yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. But anywho, uh, let's roll into the news. And first news is possible cutie mark chrysalis mod pie spitfire and flurry heart on the way. So, do you know what these are like? Do you know what are the uh, what you call this uh, cutie mark crew toys are? Yes, I remember we covered it back then. Yep, yep. Some figurine that was it in the blind bag or something, if I'm it's, not mistaken. Uh, I bought some recently, and uh, what they are is essentially um, blind bags or gacha ponies. So uh, ah, how okay. this work is, you buy uh, set pony in a tube or random it's totally random so you got no idea so you buy them you open them and you will get some random pony out of the collection uh the set collection is give me a second okay i'm taking the pamphlet and i want to see how much or how many are there in a set uh let's see so okay there are 24 of them to collect and yeah uh, there's also a set of uh Five out there, like uh, you can buy them out of the box, like how the blind bags are. If you remember, uh, yes, I remember. Yeah, so there's also special uh, cutie mark crew ponies out there, but uh, the fun ones are in the uh, blind bags, and they come in a nice looking tube, which also uh, hosts as their display case. Yes. So anyway, uh, this was season one, but it seems that. Season 2 might come out soon and some of the, uh, what you will call this, um, hints or clues or whatever it is, uh, is that Chrysalis, Spitfire mod and Flurry Heart might be coming in the second lineup soon. Mm. Have you seen this one in the wilds? I have not seen it in a while because I have not, I mean like, go to shop and hunt for it myself, so I'm not sure about it. Then again, um, looks like the new ones look do look quite nice if oh, I do yeah. say so myself. They are, they are. Um, they're really playing on the whole uh, chibi anime look and also uh, no synthetic hair kind of thing because um, mm. if you buy the uh, what you might call ponies, toys, what, what do they call them? It's been a while since I bought any one of them. The brushables, yes. <laughs> uh, because brushables, their main are not so accurate so it gets annoying to do and whatnot. So at least with this mm. one, it's a plastic figure and it's cute. Yes. But I, w- I do want to ask, I mean, probably some uh, listeners might be curious, what is the size difference between these two? I mean, cons- I mean I'm mean, i in my hand, I have a blind bag. But what about the Cutie Mark crew? How big are they? Give me a second, let me open mine. Uh, it, it's, mm, how do I put this? Uh, compared to a blind bag, they're almost the same height. But the only difference is that this one is, let's see, it's the same height, but it's like, how do I even put this? 50% shorter, like from nose to tail, it's like really short. Oh. And it's really cute. Oh, that's quite interesting. I may, I may decide to go get one, probably just get a flourish eye one. No, 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 you don't pick, or unless you buy the bundle, which is the five packs of a random ponies and whatnot, so yeah. Well, then again, you didn't know the typical... I'm not sure if they have it in this pack, because previously in blind bags, right, there is a, what you call it, codes it, Yeah, for the packaging. No, this one doesn't have any codes, because uh, instead of doing that... That was confusing. I never know why they did that in the first place. But this one seems to have 
no sense of coding. Like this is just totally random. There's no code to tell people what are inside this. I could be wrong. Give me a second because I see some random numbers next to the barcode. Give me a second if I'm. Uh, oh, probably. Uh, probably uh, I did. I did hit the jackpot again. <laughs> uh, probably. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I had one shining armor, and the number uh-huh. on its cover is eight one two seven one, and uh-huh. I got another random pony here. Let me see what what do I have here. Uh, who are you again? Oh, Fluttershy. Uh, this is Equestria Struggle Fluttershy, and the number is eight one two two one. So anyway, um, for you folks at home. If you do see the numbers, do let me know. I, I just want to know if it's true or not. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, maybe? <laughs> maybe? Question mark. Maybe, probably it's the last two numbers or something. Or was it the last three numbers? Or maybe is maybe the barcode is the same, but maybe this is another site. If you maybe check the box or something, there may be a number at the some random number of nowhere or yeah, letters. Yeah. You never know, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I did remember there was this one time one of the series for the blind bag, right? There is a viewable window that you can look into the packaging to see what pony you get. So that kind of beat out the fun of it, but I'm not sure what happened for this one. Yeah, I'm trying to double check and see if it's true or not. Because, uh, oh, give me a second. <laughs> uh, there seems to be a spreadsheet. So let me see. <laughs> mm, shining armor. <laughs> there you go. Shining armor. His code is oh uh oh I see okay so they'll be, they're building up a database around here and okay uh it seems that my number here doesn't hit the shining armor but it seems that in the U S uh eight one one four one is shining armor while in Europe it's eight one zero two one and so on. And uh, let me see, maybe if there's a Equestria Girl Fluttershy. Nah, like, they, uh, the database there is still building and they haven't done everything yet. Yeah, probably you could contribute to it. Don't you think so? Yeah, but I need to buy them all first or I need to buy at least a few first. No, I mean, you could contribute one to the column that says Singapore because like I saw one that was says Shining Armor. Probably from there you can contribute. Probably. Not too Pro- sure. Probably. Because it looks like every, every country has a different code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's true too. That's true too. Because uh, I'm checking it right now. And yeah, it's like each country has its own thing and stuff. Yeah, I'm see- I'm looking at the same website you're looking at uh, there, Star. Ah, uh-huh, okay. It means that we probably have to link it into the show notes. Probably, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make it easier for our listeners. True, true. But you know what? Uh, hunting ponies like this is fun and all, but let's go for something else. Like something more easier than that? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, what is that easier thing? Books. Books. Because you don't need to look at code numbers for books because you can already see it, the cover. You can pick it up and you can just read it. Uh, are you implying that it's not used to build book forts? No, books are for reading. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, 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 anywho. <coughs> uh, if you're a fan of the Equestria Girls, uh, they recently come out with a new book, Make Your Own Magic, The Star Swirl Do-Over. So, what is this book all about? Well, I got no idea. From the sound of it, it's like a choose-your-own-adventure kind of book. And, okay, I'm on the Amazon page, and I'm going to read the, uh, whatchamacallit, the synopsis. It seems that the descriptions say it's tied in with the shorts. Uh, it's it tied in to the You Choose the Ending content from the all-new Equestria Girls digital series. So, for those listeners out there who actually watch the series, this is probably is the continuation of it. Or a book version of it, yes. Or maybe. Maybe either a continuation or a tie-in or something. Or just the book version. We will not know. So it's, it's interesting. Like, if you like reading, go ahead. Uh, personally, for me, I'm not a big book reader guy. So, <laughs> nah. 
not a big fan. So yeah, that, that's uh, unfortunate for me. But anywho, mm. what I do like is watching the TV show, and uh, it seems that Australia is at it again because Australia continues early episode release all the way to episode twenty four. Oh wow! Well, at least you don't. Uh, at least you don't have to re- uh, watch the. Was it the French or was it Swedish version that we covered last week? French and Swedish because they are at it again. I seen a bit of it on uh, line. <coughs> Sorry, <clears throat> I seen a bit of it online. Um, they were talking about well, they were talking in French, but I didn't really understand it. And Silva told me that the French. Mentioning Scooter Lou in French is not a uh, fun one to listen to. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, up to episode 34. And update. If you check out the show notes. Uh, for you guys at home, probably it doesn't really matter because we're not live. But for us here, I just edited the show notes live. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho. Um, continuing on the Australia want to release everything bandwagon. Uh, the final schedule in Australia has been posted, confirming that they will be finishing the English language season on the eighth and the ninth of September. What? Wait, wait, wait! Does are you are you trying to say that they are trying to re- they are releasing episodes every day? Uh, no idea because okay, uh, back on the uh, previous news, they listed up until episode twenty four. But it seems that they also posted um, newer episodes or newer to the list, uh, 25 and 26, which are going to be the final. Uh, other than that, I, I got no idea. Like, I am trying to look at where is all of this are and whatnot. But, oh man, in, in the end, what we do know is that the dates, uh, 8 and 9 will be the... Australian airing for the final see, uh, f- final episode for the season. So yeah, that's going to be uh, annoying. <sighs> Typical, eh? Yeah. So, um, what's your opinion on this, man? Like, I-, I know you haven't been watching season 8 that much, or probably at all, but what do you think, man? Like, all of the episodes are out and whatnot, but what? Well, at least we got one thing I could say. We got an early hiatus for people who watch it early. <laughs> I don't know, man. This this, is, this this kind of irks me because right now, today, on the day that we're recording, we got episode 18, Yax, uh, Yak Sax. And that was one of Yaget- the... Wh- yeah. Which one? Yaket- you mean Sax. the Yaggedy Sax? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yaget- that was a early episode for... Uh, the Discovery Channel when they wanted to air it early. Like, what the hey? It's a season of spoilers. It's also the season of all the leaks. Uh, <laughs> well, is it counted as a leaks or is it no, counted as early releases? It's early release for the country that it's in. So it's not really a spoiler, but it's one of those scenarios where I, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's just um, complicated. It's just complicated. I wonder what's the point of all this. I mean, is it because of every country's uh, TV regulations operating differently or something? Not really. I, I, I don't think so. It could be a deal between um, Hasbro, Hasbro and the TV and, company. Yeah, it could be that. And uh, Discovery Channel wanted to air it one way while the other country wanted to air it in another way. So it's one of those scenarios where uh, if said country bought the license for the show and that's how they want to show it, uh, that's how they do it. Because if you notice, right, uh, when the show was on the hub, this wasn't a problem. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it. Mm -hmm. But now it's Discovery Channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's as if it's like... It's out in the open for everyone, <laughs> anyone. Kind of, kind of. But you know what? Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Here comes a new challenger! 
And welcome to the podcast, Daniel Anthony. Hey, what's up? How are you doing, man? I have really seen better days. Uh, true that, true that. And it sounds like you're phoning it in. <laughs> Why do you mean true that? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, you are you stalking my life? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I can uh, not confirm nor deny that. And also, you signed the contract where I have full regulation or full rights to check up on you via uh, uh, secret cameras for every... Ah, jokes on you, I have no internet. Oh, jokes on you. I haven't... Was, was, you, uh, <laughs> sorry, jokes on you. I have a remote control drone. <laughs> this is going to be hard when <laughs> everybody's yeah, trying to talk. Want. There's no signal in this house. Like, you just heard me on the call just now. There's no signal in certain parts of this house. Your drone flies through and whoop, it's going to hit the floor. <laughs> Uh, but, but anywho, talking Come over in, each other is fun and all. So why not we stop that and be an angel? Oh, it's a it's perfect time for me to come into the call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anywho, no, no, I want a salad. <laughs> Give me a second. Uh, so anywho, uh, discuss. Well, you don't have a second anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get through the news. So anywho, uh, Discovery Family recently tweeted out that. It's Be An Angel Day. We encourage you to be kind to the people around you by being positive to the world. Yay, I totally support that. But problem is, Angel's not your avatar. Nope. It's. I was wondering why they say encourage you to be kind to people around you. Isn't it more towards Flourishai's job? Yeah, not I angel. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Who came up with the name Be An Angel Day? Somebody's got to own up for this huge error. I <laughs> know, because here's the thing. Although Angel is cute and fluffy, he is the embodiment of evil. Not just that, I mean, even if you consider today uh, be an Angel Day, even in a wider context of Angel, Angel aren't known to be the best folks around. Like, your guardian Angel can sometimes be the one who helps you, other times he's just laughing his butt off. <laughs> oh, you're thinking about that? Uh, yes, mm, yes. I, I can agree. No, it's just angels in general. They'll be, just like staring, they'll be like staring at you in the morning and uh, they notice that you've picked up uh, a can of your shaving cream instead of deodorant. You're aiming it at your armpit and he's like, ha ha, look at this idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and but, then he calls his friend, hey guys, 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 guys come check this out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho. Uh, going beyond that, right? Going beyond the literal angel, the angel in the show has been always known to be about tough love. So, saying be kind and positive is one of those things where it hit the mark. That's all I have to say. It's interesting. I do like the idea, but you have to pick a better avatar or a better spokesperson for it. Detrimental to your health. Yep. Yes, and narcissistic. <laughs> yeah, but anywho, but anywho... I mean, you see, this is this is Angel. He treats salad making, which is supposed to be a trivial thing that little cartoony, cutesy horses can do. But no, he had to go Gordon Ramsay on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally this agree with that. It's so raw. <laughs> <laughs> it's so deep, <laughs> raw. <laughs> oh, boys. But anyway, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, let's let's hit into well the next topic and then since you're here that could only mean one thing and well you're my best friend and whatnot but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attribute that you being on the show and whatnot but uh you are also the chair for uh Project C PonyCon so what's new brother? Oh, a lot of things are new since we last spoke about it. And uh, we've been rolling out updates almost every other week on EQD and other places. So, um, yeah, since we last spoke, let's go through a few things that are new to this con. For the first one, uh, this, uh, did I talk about the spirit tickets last time I was on air? No, you, you did, did not mention it, I think. No, I didn't. All right. I mean, I've been talking about it in a few places. So, spirit tickets are actually a concept that we borrowed from uh, Japan PonyCon. They did up these tickets where you can, uh, let's just say you can't make it to the con, but you want to support the con. If you buy a spirit ticket, the, we will, the convention will send you a package, a mail with something from the con for you to be able to enjoy it when you can't be at the con. It's almost like, you know, sending something from the con to you. 
And we are adopting this idea for Fiesta C PonyCon because we know not everyone can make it for the convention. We're calling it a message in a bottle. It, it retails for 50 Singapore dollars, including worldwide shipping anywhere on the planet. Wow, that's awesome. Inside, you will get a few button badges, a poster, at least one poster, if not two. We will include um, a souvenir ticket and also a free t-shirt as well. Oh, wow, that is a lot of good swag for just 50 bucks. Yeah, and it's 50 Singapore dollars, not US dollars. So if you convert, that's less than 40 US dollars if any Americans are listening into this. And worldwide shipping? Like, trust me, folks, worldwide shipping here for, what, essentially 50 Singapore dollars? It's true, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Singapore, Singapore, I mean, it's not worldwide shipping for Singapore dollars, it's worldwide shipping included. Yeah, so, wow, that is just awesome because, trust me, I bought things online where... Uh, for example, I just bought a phone case. Uh, it was on thirty dollars, but I need to add in another thirty more dollars for shipping. So essentially, sixty dollars. So ugh. yep, that's what happens when you buy things online. Shipping is a killer. Mm-hmm. We're making that a little easier by making sure that you can just buy. You can. Uh, Buy it, buy it and anywhere in the world because you know we, we didn't want to spend time setting up systems and then having to entertain questions like how come shipping to A country is more expensive than B country because you know postal services work in funny ways and that's not really our problem to deal with that true, but true. we're just making it simple one size fits all uh, the package and anywhere it be it in Singapore itself or around any other part of the world it will cost the same yeah no, that's nice man that's nice like that is something um, people should look into like if they're interested in supporting the con but couldn't go uh, this is one way to do it and also uh, it's a good sorry, and also it's a great way to well support the con if you can't attend like let's say you have to go to another convention at the same day but you want to support uh, Fiesta C Pony Con you could do this yeah, and uh, if you're going to another convention on the same day, that would mean you're probably headed to Ponyville Cider Fest because that's the convention that's happening at the same time as Fiesta C PonyCon. So if you're going there, then have fun as well. Yep, yep. This way, this swag. <laughs> okay, but there is there is one caveat that we're about to announce that we haven't announced yet. Uh, the announcement should be out by the time this episode is in. Uh, you will have to place your order by the 16th of September. Uh, yes. which is a Monday. You have to place it by then because it will take us some time to prepare these packages, get ready for them to ship, and they will only ship out after the convention. Now, the, the reason for this is that we may have some leftover stuff from the convention that we could throw into the box, but the bigger reason is because we are an attendee's first convention. That means we always make sure that our attendees get the best treatment. If you're not, if you're buying this ticket, then sorry to say you're not an attendee, you're just a supporter. So we focus our resources on giving the attendees the best and then we'll take care of you. Yeah, this kind of seems like a bit of a jerk move to make when we just do this to, you know, put we, we say that you don't matter, but our attendees matter. But um, we put our attendees' experience first. And once again, you're really not under any obligation to purchase this. It's just if you want to support us. Some people have actually messaged this, uh, messaged the convention saying that, hey, uh, I want to make sure that what I'm, what I'm buying gives me my money's worth and value. And we say that, uh, when you purchase this uh, message in a bottle, you're not really buying. You're not really buying the stuff that we're about to send you. You're basically sending the convention a donation of sorts, mm-hmm. so that the convention can run better. You're supporting the con, and uh, well, that, well, we're not saying that we're going to say use this as an excuse to not send you anything or treat you like garbage. You know, we will treat the attendees first because that's actually what you're supporting us in doing. Mm. And also, there's a high chance where. Uh, they might be like over swag, or you guys need to see your what you call this financials. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the background, and yeah, let's just hope that you could promise the bare minimum. You get the bare minimum. You get a free T-shirt. You get at least one poster. You get some button badges, and uh, the more the star of the pack is actually by Crystal Empire Records. It's called Altitude Deluxe. It is the deluxe cd edition of the album produced for last year's convention it, we have a few more extra tracks on it um some of them may actually bring back some memories of the car all right cool cool so basically um uh, for 50 singapore dollars you get that basic um any additional it's uh, need to know or wait and see kind of thing so yeah that's not bad 
Um, we don't we don't even guarantee anything additional. But I said the the biggest reason why we're doing it this way is because again attendees matter first of all mm. to all of us. So, 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 so because of that, we will make sure that the attendees have the best experience, and then we'll come and attend to you. Yeah, all right. Still, uh, you'll get the t shirt and whatnot. So that's still good. In my books. Mm-hmm. So what else, man? Because uh, I saw one big one, but I'm not gonna spoil it till you see it, man. Okay, uh, we've got a few more things as well lined up. Uh, yeah, if you want all this cool stuff, but you are going to be at the convention, then you can actually purchase it as an add-on to your convention ticket. Oh, okay. We, the, we call this the message. We, sorry, we call this the party pack. You can add this onto your ticket when you buy it at tickets.cponycon.com. If you have already bought a ticket and you want to add this on, you have to check your email. We will be sending out the instructions on how you can add this onto a already purchased ticket. All right, all right. That's like uh, Indiegogo or Kickstarter where you want to upgrade your support tier. Yay. Something like that, yes. But uh, again, even if you purchase this, remember that Fiesta Ponycon is one size fits all with the ticketing. So tickets, are, tickets will always remain the same. They're the same ticket for everybody. All right, all right. And uh, next up, okay, next uh, announcement we have to make is this week we're actually announcing vendor registration. So if you want to be a vendor at Fiesta Ponycon, you can check it out at vendors.cponycon.com. That is our website for you to apply to be a vendor at Fiesta C Ponycon. Just like our ticket, we're also going through this with a one-size-fits-all standard. We're not going to be like last year where we actually had different tiers that you could have. You could have a big booth, you can have a small booth, you can have half a booth and whatnot. We're approaching this with a with a single with a single um, tier, which is you get a booth at the con. That's it. And seventy-five Singapore dollars for a standard booth, which includes a table, two chairs, two vendor passes, and a little banner for your table. All right, that sounds good. That sounds good. I mean, uh, two chairs is uh, good enough. I mean, uh, if you want to have a bigger table, buy two booths, right? You can do that, but um, all the applications will be subject to scrutiny because we have a much sp- smaller space this year than we did you know, in any previous year that we had uh, Project C Point. I mean, we've only had it once. But we we're having a much smaller space than last year. So now we actually have to be very selective in who we approve for booths. And uh, we like to just put out a warning that, I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone knows this, just for every convention that is out there, everything is subject to approval. All right, you know, right. You know. So vendor booths are on the standby, tickets are there. It's just waiting for applications to be in. Oh, by the way, don't forget, um, is panel registration still open? Panel registrations are still open. And um, yeah, we announced the panel registrations. And just now we said, if you want to order a message in a bottle, you need to get that order in by the 16th of September. Now, the 16th of September is actually our master deadline. That Uh, means you have to finish, you have to submit all applications by 16th September, which means vendor registration, um, panel registration, uh, panel vendor application, panel applications, message in a bottle yes. orders, party pack orders, all have to be done by the 16th of September. Right. And also the musician's panel, right? Yes, the musician's application, which we are about to open as well very soon, you'll have to get that in by the 16th of September. All right, seems like... So there's one uh, deadline for all. Yeah, yep. <laughs> it seems like everybody needs to uh, catch up to that uh, date, so that's good, that's good. There's still quite a lot of time left, but um, we also will be opening volunteer registration. Now, the volunteer registration doesn't abide by the 16th September deadline. Um, you can still buy tickets all the way up to the convention, so those are not affected by the deadline. But the ones that are affected by the deadline are the vendors, musicians, panels, and the message in a bottle. All right, all right. So uh, you mentioned volunteers. So how does that work? Like, what do they need to do and stuff? Like previously in uh, Project Ponycon in Bangkok, we had a big venue. We had a lot of things to cover. We're having the almost polar opposite of that this year. We have a small venue. We have less to cover, which actually makes the job a whole lot easier for all of us. We kind of still need some hand on the ground. So if you can, if you're help, if you're willing to help out to volunteer at the convention, we'll need some help um, dealing registration. We'll need some help uh, managing vendors and some attendees. So, yeah, do apply to be a, a volunteer. We'll have volunteers.cponycon.com up soon. If you access it now at the time of recording, it's not up yet, but it would be up soon. And you'll be able to check it out and uh, apply for a position that you want with the con. 
this year we are actually going to throw in a t-shirt for every person who we accept the volunteers and who pulls their weight nice that's awesome mm-hmm. cool so okay the final uh, I'm not sure okay is there anything more Oh, plenty. There's a lot to talk about, but um, yeah, I know what you all want to hear is that we're you know what we're a convention that has announced so many things, but we haven't said a thing about our guests. Oh yes, from what I heard, that you're going to be having a podcaster there or something like that. Uh, I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah, this dude, like he he he's going to be coming down the trunk of my car. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, the MBS show, you guys are going to have a little panel there. The time has not been confirmed yet. We'll be uh, getting that all in soon once we get our agenda together. But be sure to be there for the MBS show panel. Check out what these awesome people do um, when they're not on air and while they are on air. (laughs) So so, uh, there's that panel coming up. We've got a few more panels lined up that we're currently putting the finishing touches on. These announcements will be coming in the the following weeks. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. So Norman will be there. Uh, Young, are you going to be there? I'm not sure yet. Still un- still a question mark for my case. You see, for people like Young, we just got to put in a little bit of a disclaimer here. At, not really a disclaimer, but a fun fact that Young does not live in Singapore, but his currency is interchangeable. That means he doesn't need to change money. Yeah, because the Singaporeans are totally good on, what do you call this, accepting Brunei dollars. Their BFF. Yeah. Yeah. So you should be there. <laughs> easy for you to say. Uh, well, I have to change money, dude. You know, it's not that easy. I, I know. Well, yeah, if I manage to settle in my mon- monetary problems, then it will be easy for me to go. What monetary problems? You're you're the one with your solution already on the table. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. Just just teasing. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, for us. Um, in terms of guests, we also recently just announced that, you know, d- because we're small and we're difficult to host a lot of people, but that doesn't mean we're not going to try. And with the help of some of the amazing people in the team for Project C PonyCon, Fiesta C PonyCon is proud to present that we will be having a teleconference call with Equestria's favorite former government. <laughs> The voice of Starlight Glimmer, <laughs> Kelly Sheridan. Hey, that's awesome. Woo! <laughs> it will be it will be quite an interesting call because uh, you know we've got a lot of Starlight Glimmer fans in the region, and I you know I never th- I never expected Starlight to become this popular of a character, but here we are, and look at how she is in the fandom. She has come such a long way from the tyrannical leader she was, and. <laughs> Fallen all the way down. It's like Portal Two in reverse. It's like Wheatley, you know. <laughs> Starts off nice, ends up being a jerk. You know, Starlight's the opposite. Starlight started off as a jerk, and now she's nice and trying to help everyone. But it's also clueless as to what the heck is going on. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Uh, that's awesome to hear, and it's fun to listen. So, uh, teleconference call. There's a time and date for this. I'm assuming. There is a time and date. We're not revealing it yet until we get our full agenda done because we don't want anyone to speculate on panel timings and stuff yet. So just keep the tabs on our social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatnot. We will be announcing our schedule and agenda soon and it should be there. All righty then, all righty then. So uh, it's awesome to hear that you'll be having Kelly on the con via teleconference. That's awesome because, hey, uh, no matter how you get the guests or how they appear, just having them there is awesome. I remember uh, Vincent being uh, there at what you call this? Uh, Friendship Express. Yeah, the yes. Friendship Express. That was fun. Like, e- even though it was uh, via call, it was still a lot of fun. Oh yes, Vincent is a lot of fun, and I can assure you that uh, Kelly and Vincent are great friends. So you know the the antics and the banter and the fun they get up to, they're kind of like on the same wavelength. So you're gonna expect a lot of fun of her as well. Oh, nice, nice, nice. That's gonna be awesome. So anywho, uh, is that all, man? Like, you you're getting me hype. Well, it's good to be hype. <laughs> yeah, but uh, for now, that's all we have to announce. Though we have. We actually have very little left to announce. The con is actually getting quite close. And yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, you can feel the nerves with us because we're rushing to get everything all right, all ready for the, this big event, this big day. We've been, uh, you know, Fiesta C Pony Con is the con that almost shouldn't have happened because 
uh, as you know, C uh, for Project C PonyCon last year in Bangkok, it was a great event. It was so much fun, but it also landed us neck deep in the red. We were not doing well financially at all. But you see, Project C PonyCon presented it to presented how how Project, how Fiesta C PonyCon came to us was because it kind of felt like um it was an olive branch, you know, it felt like there was there was still a way for it to happen despite the odds stacked against this con. So the, the option was, you know, should we just take this opportunity or not? And right now, looking at how things are in the community with the impending uh, end of BronyCon coming up, I have no regrets. This is, you know, we're here to celebrate a fandom and I think that's what we're going to be doing. Awesome, awesome. And I can't wait to join in that party, yo. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it will be small, it will be very small. You know, you might feel that it's too small to be called a convention. But to be very honest, we really couldn't care less about what we should be called or what we shouldn't be called. We're there to have fun and that's what we're going to do. Right, 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 right. So that's Fiesta Seek Pony Con. Uh, it's going to be happening soon. And I hope to see you guys over there because it's going to be fun. I, I have this feeling like it's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. And the thing is that, uh, you know, chatting with other con chairs around, you learn about the real magic that lies behind small conventions, that they have a, they have their own little brand of how they can be fun without having to be, you know, completely, uh, what do you call this? They don't have to be big and boisterous and loud. They can be fun in their own little respect. And that's what makes them magical in a way. Take the conventions like um, the Friendship Express. <laughs> It was under 200 attendees, but Lord, we had a blast. It was so much fun. Yeah, I remember that, man. I was there twice. It was awesome. It was really awesome. And to those of you who are listening, if you like the Friendship Express, the Friendship Express is actually coming back this Ooh, year. Yeah. I'll be going to that wow. one too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be something fun that to look forward to. And it will be after Fiesta C PonyCon. So another thing is if you're actually coming and traveling all the way, here for Fiesta C Pony Cotton to, to Singapore. Um, just take a little bus up to KL and uh, hang around there for a couple more weeks. Uh, the Friendship Express is in November. Let me just get that date for you, just certain. It'll so be you... on November 17th to the 18th. Yep, 17th, 18th November in uh, Sunway Geo in works in a place called Works Ground. It's a co-working space. So this is actually going to be uh, there are two firsts in ones almost here. It's um. No, Fiesta Seaponica is not really a first in that sense. Uh, Fiesta Seaponica, one of the things that we have to almost apologize for is that we are, we're, we're, we're putting on a nice summer luau theme that we have here. We're in a, we're, our venue is a place called the City Beach Resort, but here is the bad news. There's no beach, neither is there a pool. <laughs> it is weird. You know? In fact, we expected a pool. We went for a venue inspection. They're like, where's the pool? We don't have a pool. What? <laughs> uh, anywho, the, in, in terms of the Friendship Express it's going to be one of the first conventions ever to be held in a co-working space and the Friendship Express has always been a convention that's close to the heart of the community especially the artists so because of that if you love art or you love seeing art or you love making art the Friendship Express is going to be an amazing convention for you to attend it's going to be unlike any other pony convention you've ever been for Friendship Express is truly unique in so many ways. And yeah, block that date, 17, 18 November. If you're going to be at Fiesta C Pony Con, we'll see you 27, 28 October. So yeah, two conventions coming up in this region. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. That's going to be awesome. So uh, I guess that's the announcement for Fiesta C Pony Con. Fun fact, because even though Norman lives in Malaysia, he's actually closer to where Fiesta will be than to where the Friendship <laughs> Express will be. True that, true, true, true that, true that. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah, because uh, when people ask us about will they get lost in Singapore or anything like, okay, here's a fun fact: from any point in Singapore, if you drive um, thirty-eight miles in any direction, you will no longer be in the country. <laughs> yeah, any any point oh, yeah. in Singapore, if you drive thirty-eight miles in any direction, you will no longer be in Singapore. Oh yeah, you'll be in the ocean. Or in Johor, oh, or yeah. in Batam, oh, yeah. or in Balai Karimun, which is Indonesia. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, uh, that's the announcement for Fiesta Pony Con. So let's head into the next topic. 
And next topic is what have we been doing for our week? So uh, we've been running along for a bit. So let's tune it down a bit. So yeah, Star, what have you been doing, man? Uh, I've been playing Monster Hunter World as what I mentioned last week. I just finished my game. So I'm just doing some uh, random side quests. Nice. Thanks, the spirit. Finish uh, yep. the main quest before the side quest. <laughs> Don't get this <laughs> side quest and doing the main quest. Yes. The Skyrim, bro. The Skyrim. <laughs> okay, uh, you you say it for Skyrim, I say it for Saints Row. Saints Row, uh, yeah, Saints Row actually is one of those cases where you want to finish the side quest first, but Skyrim is a beast unto itself where one side quest uh, overlaps to another side quest. So you can have multiple side quests in the side quest. It's like, yo dog, I heard you like side quests, so I put a side quest in your side quest. Oh my god. <laughs> Dank memes. Well, but the interesting news is that both the games are on Switch. Well, coming soon for Saints Row, that is. <laughs> oh god. Saints Row on Switch, oh my god. Oh, wow. Yes, Saints Row the Third is announced on Switch. Oh my oh god, my then god. you got the good one. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So anywho, so anywho. Um, Dan, what about you? How was your week, man? My week was great. My week was fantastic. I loved my week until the internet went out. What happened? I don't know. Something is going on at Maxis, and um, our internet went out on Wednesday morning, which was during Hari Raya Hajj. Okay. Uh, sorry, Hari Raya Korban. Mm-hmm. It's the same, isn't it? Uh, different. Sorry, uh, yeah, kind of the same. Kind of the same. My bad. Yeah, the same. Yeah, Hari Raya Korban on Wednesday. The internet went out in the morning, and uh, I knew it because, okay. I'll have a confession. I have an internet connected home. And uh, that means I rely very heavily on the internet. My alarm that wakes me up in the morning is internet connected. And I realized it didn't go off. And I was like, what is going on? Why is this house suddenly not working? <laughs> That's when I realized, oh crap, the internet's not working. Why is the internet not working? And then my mom comes to my room and is like, what did you do to the router? I'm like, I don't know. I didn't do anything. <laughs> and, and we realized the internet was completely dead. It was not working at all. And right now, at the time of recording, I'm entering into day five with no internet. Did you so, call uh, the service guy? Like, did they ask you to turn it on and off again? Yes, they did. <laughs> yes, they did. They asked me to do that first. And they asked me to try moving some cables around. And then, uh, let's just say, th- things don't look very pretty right now. We've escalated complaints to a very high level. And... Uh, we're really trying to get this thing solved as fast as we can. If not, I've just been... I, I, I was out until 4 in the morning yesterday at a KFC using their Wi-Fi because there's no internet in the house. <laughs> but in all honesty, right? Like, I... Did they... Okay, did they reset their routers over there? Uh, they claimed that they're looking into it. They didn't say anything of that because, sort. Because uh, I had that problem here before with... No, I, yeah, I, I remember. I had that problem with Steam and YouTube back in the day. Like, I had that problem for over a year. Uh, the situation was this. I couldn't play YouTube videos normally because they wouldn't play or wouldn't load. And I couldn't go through Steam normally. Like, you want to see Steam uh, games and whatnot, like the Steam store, it wouldn't load properly. So, so how uh, did you get around that? Uh, here's the funny story. I kind of asked people on my Facebook about, hey, uh, are you guys having any problems with this? And then uh, I got a tweet via Unified, which is our local ISP provider. Mm-hmm. And they asked uh, what's wrong and whatnot and stuff. And I, well, I got into contact with them. And they say they'll look into the matter and, okay, we'll try restarting our servers here and problem solved. Yeah, I'm currently in Twitter DMs with Maxis, which is my ISP, and uh, I haven't gotten anything productive out of them. Damn. So, uh, you know, it's just that I woke up in the morning and I couldn't get this thing to work, and uh, we've escalated it so far that I'm really on the verge of screaming. And, you know, you can't play games on uh, KFC Wi-Fi. Like this week, the latest uh, the updates. I'll be quick about this. The latest update to the DLC on uh, Rainbow Six Siege. The next DLC is coming out soon, called Operation Grim Sky, and I'm excited about this. The thing is that there's going to be a map rework in this one. They're going to actually redo an entire map. Um, what makes this special is that the map they're about to redo 
is actually the map where you take your tutorial for the game on, where you can actually earn points if, nice. you, do it, if you unlock achievements in it. So if you're going to rework the tutorial map, I need to finish the bloody tutorial first <laughs> before you do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, well, things things look like they're going south for you, man. I, I hope you get that problem they're solved. Not doing well at all. I really want to get this solved. Like, okay, um, you you had problems with YouTube, and one funny thing is that earlier this year, Max has actually had problems with Discord, and Discord users were complaining about it. Well, I I didn't experience that because well, I I'm not a heavy user of Discord, so yeah. Yeah, I'm a very heavy user of Discord. And when Maxis started have, like blocking Discord down, right, we got really pissed off at it. Why? But what there was that? nothing we could do. I, I don't know. And eventually they undid it. I think they were thinking that, you know, hey, let's turn off this thing everyone is using and everyone gets better internet. Uh... <laughs> now, you remember, the National Broadband Network in Australia, or also known as the NBN, had actually blamed gamers for the reason why their connection is so slow. Uh, no. Yeah, the NBN has done that, so you'll be surprised how low IFPs are willing to stoop. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But anywho, yeah. but, but anywho. until then, my, my life is a chore because my air conditioner is connected to the internet, my light is connected to the internet, and I can't turn them on or off without the bloody internet. I mean, I have I have manual overrides, but I've got to climb up to the light, flip the <laughs> little switch behind it that can't connect the internet. My Google Home is like, I'm sorry, I can't connect to the internet. I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I, I hope things improve for you, man. I hope things improve for you. This is so sad. Alexa, play Despacito. <laughs> I can't because I don't have the internet. <laughs> well, at least you don't have to hear that. Yep. <laughs> you know what you actually hear? We're sorry. That's only available to Spotify Premium subscribers. But try out this playlist based on... No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho um, uh, let's go for me next and yeah my week has been pretty okay um, I recently bought Guacamelee 2 on Steam and uh, Guacamelee 2 is a action adventure game uh, in the vein of Metroid and Castlevania where you well I think the phrase is uh, Metroidvania platformer? yes action platformer it has combos and whatnot it's really fun and I am going through the game again on hard just to complete the achievements and the achievement hunting for this game is pretty simple like I think I spent two sessions purposely hunting for achievements while the rest are just normal like they came in normally well man platformers are making a huge comeback yeah they just had a huge announcement this week oh for which game I had in time the 3D platformer. Oh yeah, that one. Oh, I'm I know that game, and it's coming to Switch. Oh yeah, that's cool. And then uh, there's also Hollow Knight, which has released his new DLC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. For free, free DLC. Ooh, nice. Hollow Knight. Yeah, that's the spirit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, what you might call this platformers are well, I have to put an asterisk to that indie platformers because. The expensive platformers, like the real people who make those kind of games, don't really care. <laughs> They're gone. They don't exist anymore. Well, not really. They They're do. They're of the past. Yeah. Who makes AAA platformers? Um, Nintendo with Mario. Uh, okay. Yeah, but okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. like what a sixty dollar game. Do you consider Smash a platformer fighting game or is it some creature uh, of its own? That, that is a fighting game. There's no platformer. That is a fighting game. Yeah, but you play it on the platform. <laughs> that's, <laughs> a stage. Fine, okay, fine. <laughs> that's just stage hazard. So anywho, anywho, anywho. Um, they destroyed Luigi. I'm angry. Nintendo just announced it that he's okay. There's nothing wrong with him. That's all they want you to think. <laughs> so anywho, so anywho. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thebeachogmail.com. You can reach the show's Twitter account at the MBS Show, and you can reach me personally at Norman Sanzo. Star, where can the good people find you? People can find me on my DeviantArt, AngelicorXX, or my Twitter, AngelicorXX. What about you, Dan? You can find me in various places, such as Twitter at St. Pinky, and follow uh, CPonicon on Twitter and... Instagram and Facebook, just search for SeedPonyCon. Uh, you'll see the uh, accounts as respectively. And also, you can come and join us in the Project SeedPonyCon Discord server. It's discord.seedponycon.com. 
because Discord won't make us a partner. That's why we had to make our own link. I'm in the group. I've seen a lot of chats and it's really interesting. It's really interesting. For those of you who are listening who left the server, we kind of apologize because this week we had an issue. Somebody abused and everyone ping, and we're very sorry about that. We've, re- we've stripped everyone of that privilege, including ourselves. So, uh, yeah, we won't have that anymore. Yeah, I didn't really notice it because every time when I see um, there's a highlight, I just press control or shift page down. So, yeah, I, I avoid all that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, it, it actually just disturbed the heck out of so many people. And I know a lot of people are upset about this. And, uh, you know, we've got one or two people. I mean, it, it's quite relevant. People always say this is one or two people that are in your Discord server posting old, stale memes, making stupid jokes that somehow keep the place alive at a little slow rate. The problem is if you kick them, they're sending their 6,000 Twitter followers after you. <laughs> Uh, well, that, that that's the bane of Discord servers, or any servers, really. I mean, remember back in the day with Skype? You remember TeamSpeak? No. <laughs> you, know, you don't pay the bill, see what happens? <laughs> oh, boy. Ah, uh, the typical TeamSpeak. So, anyway, anyway. TeamSpeak, like ICQ. Don't remind me of ICQ. All you gotta do in Skype is you have a 300-person group chat. You just hit the call button. Oh, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> G double G on that. So anyway, so anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and sit to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PrivileLive.com. Also do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there you'll catch me, Silver Quills of your heart song, review, pony episodes, comics, movies, and whatever in whatever tickles our fancy. Uh, recently we did a review of The Princess Bride. It's a really awesome movie and I think you guys should go check out that movie and also our review. If you would like to support... Have you all started doing game reviews by any chance? We did once. It's not really a game review, but more of a talk. Yeah, because if you go into game reviews, like you're going to get really contrasting opinions these days, I've heard. Probably. We'll see, we'll see. But anyway, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week early access to the review discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurka Cat, Master of Black, Tristan, Charles, Starstream, Lucky Knight, and also Amy. Thank you guys for being awesome. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. And this is Starstream. I've been Daniel Anthony. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Take care, people. See you at Sipanicon.